What's up fellow game developers? my name is Tyler Potts and welcome back to Muddy Wolf Studios and in this video we are going to be creating a basically a wall jump slash wall sliding um, little thing it's super easy to do uh, once you're grappling onto a wall you could probably add some particle effect you could jump off them um, and stuff like that so I'm going to be showing you how to make this whole thing um, basically uh, from scratch so without further ado let's get started I'm going to open up a new scene okay guys so I've set up a new scene just how you saw it before I've also added the movement script and set it all up I'm not going to go over the movement script too much in this video but you can see here we move like this um, we do get stuck to this wall and we haven't actually got our script our jump our wall jump script on and the reason for that is because we need to add a physics element to this called slippery now i'm going to add this um, to our player so we go to player you see here we have this physics material 2d so in assets i'm going to right click create physics material 2d and we'll call it slippery and i'm just going to set friction equal to zero and also the bounce just leave that at zero i'm going to click on player i'm going to drag this into its uh, material type and I'm also going to drag it into its box collider material hit save and that is going to make sure it doesn't stick to the wall um, which might seem bad because you kind of want it to stick to the wall but we're going to write our own script to do this so there you go now we're not sticking and we can't jump from this wall to this wall yet so let's quickly go over what I've done so I've set up, um, a bunch of walls and a piece of ground object which is cut with a layer of ground I've then also um, on the player added obviously the player movement script which takes in a bunch of different variables but it also um, as you can see in the rigid by 2D has a gravity scale of 5, um, a collision detection of continuous, sleeping mode, never sleep and interpolate to interpolate and a freeze on the set axes. The reason for these are just to make sure we're always checking when we're touching the walls um, and it just helps basically with a lot of things. Gravity scale 5 because I like how it looks when you fall down faster and you can't jump as high. Um, it kind of makes it feel more realistic than the slow jumping and slow falling. Um, so let's, oh, let's tag this with player because um, it is the player. Um, and now we're going to add in a um, new script and we're going to call it uh, wall jumpy jumpy slippy slippy. You know what, we'll do it in the player movement script and I'll go over the player movement script as we go through. So let's double click this and open it up in Visual Studio Code. And as you can see here, we have our Unity, uh, using Unity namespace, um, and then we've got all our references here. Now we're gonna need to set up a few variables for the wall jump. So I'm gonna create a new um, header. I'm just gonna say header. I'm gonna call this uh, wall jump. It's going to be our wall jump variables and underneath this we're going to say we're going to need to get a transform so we're going to say public transform oh no sorry we need a float sorry we need to set a float of wall jump time and we're going to set this equal to 0.2f the reason for this is because well i'll explain when we get there but the wall jump time basically allows you so when you let go of the wall you're still able to jump for a certain period of time so if you don't do this it makes the game feel sluggish and the controls feel a bit crap so i'll show you how to use that later on so we're going to also create a public float called wall slide speed and this how fast you want the character to slide down the wall i'm going to say 0.3f i think it's a good speed and finally, the public float called um, wall distance, which I'm going to set to 0.5f. So how far away does the wall have to be from the collider? Did I say minus? Why did I do minus? Equal. From the collider, collider to be able to be colliding with the wall, to be able to grapple the wall. Um, so we're also going to set a ball of is wall sliding. It's going to be equal to false to test if we're grabbing the wall. Um, and then we're also going to create a ray cast hit 2D. And this one is just going to be called wall check hit. Um, and this is basically going to take in, if basically it's going to be what we're using to check if we're touching um, the wall. And we're also going to have a flow of just jump time. 
which we're going to use later on to in com combination with wall jump time to be able to uh, make it less sluggish so our next thing we need to do is we need to go into our fixed update and I'd say below MX or below the movement we're going to say oh actually we'll even do it below the is touching ground stuff because I feel we'll do it at the bottom here so we'll say here wall jump wall jumpy we'll give it a nickname <laughs> um, so now what we want to do is we want to say we want to use our if uh, is facing right script to say if it's facing right we're going to get the wall check hit and we're going to say equal to physics 2d dot raycast and we're going to say transform dot position so we're getting the current player's position we're then going to set a new vector 2 which we're going to say wall distance and then zero Um, so this basically, so as you can see up here, we've got the origin, which is the um, position of the where we want the raycast to start shooting from. We'd have the direction, so in which direction we want it to go, and the distance, which is wall distance. So wall distance will obviously send it um, 0.5 uh, f. Then we want the float distance, which obviously will be wall distance. Um, and then we want the ground layer. So the ground layer is obviously what we set and grounded up here under the layer mask. And I'll show you what that's set to in a second. It's set to a layer called ground, which we've set on our, all the objects we want to be able to wall grapple to or jump from. Um, so we do that. We also want to go in an else statement, which says wall check hit again. So if we're not facing right, and we want to check if we're basically touching the wall on the left side. So we're going to say if physics 2D dot ray cuts so Wait, I'm just going to copy this whole bit here, paste it in here. Let me zoom in a little. There you go. So now we're just going to say um, is minus wall distance because we're basically going. We want to shoot the ray cuts in the opposite direction. And that is all there, that's all we needed to change is that to be fair we probably could have created a variable call this once underneath and just set this to depend on if it's minus or plus positive would have been easier but i've already committed to this so i'm going to stick to it um now what we want to do is we want to say if wool oh if whack if wool check hit so if that's true so this will return true if it is touching um, a ground layer and we're going to say and and is not ground is grounded so we're saying if it's not grounded which we are setting the is grounded variable here um, and then we also want to say and mx is not equal to zero so we're actually pushing so we're not just letting go of it we're actually holding which direction we are into the wall um so we're actually it's like we're trying to grapple to the wall um you don't have to have this you can have it so if you're just if you like slide off and you just fall into the wall you're just there but i do it so we have an input from our mx so if this isn't zero so if someone's pressing a key into the wall then it's equal it's now touching the wall um and then we're gonna say is oh not is grounded is wall sliding is equal to true we also then want to say jump time so the re so we're doing so what i said before is we don't we want to be able to if we let go of the wall we don't want him to just be like okay we can't jump now because if it will make the controls feel sluggish you want to give them slight buffer time because sometimes users um unknowingly let go of a certain key and then obviously or press the key slightly too late and you want to give them some sort of buffer time between that so we're going to give them obviously 0.2 uh 0 0.2 of second so we're going to say time plus time plus wall jump time. So that's where that comes into play. And then we're going to do an else if. And all we're going to check for here now is say if jump time is less than time dot time. So if time if the time has passed and it's now further than that. So if it's been 0 0.2 two seconds 
uh, we're going to say is wall sliding is equal to false. So we'll go reset to false. Now we can say if is wall sliding. So this is the bit where we actually will slow our fall. So so it's like we're grappling onto the wall. Uh, so we'll say is wall sliding, and then we'll say rb dot velocity is equal to a new vector oh, vector two, and we're going to say uh, rb dot velocity. Oh, velocity. My keyboard is, hates me. <laughs> dot x, um, and then to actually slow down the full speed you want to say math f dot clamp to clamp the um y speed and we're going to say here it's obviously rb dot velocity dot y is the um y position the min will be wall slide speed so the speed we actually want it to do when we're actually grappling onto the wall and then for the max we don't actually want a max so we're just going to say float dot max value and that is how we slow our character. So we should be able to save now. Go back to our um, player. I'm going to click on this and check our setting. So we have it at wall jump speed. Yeah, everything looks fine. And as you see, our ground layer is equal to ground, which is set on all our ground objects up here. So let's hit play. Let's move left. Now, if I jump into this wall, nothing happens. So there's got to be an error somewhere. So let's go have a look what's wrong. We can actually put this into debug mode, put it in here, and we can see all our variables here. So if we press play, we'll see what's not working. We want to see if is wall sliding works. If we jump to the right, you can see is wall sliding never comes on. So we need to figure out why that is. So let's go back to our um, code and we're going to do something. So under rip physics raycast, we want to say um, debug dot uh, draw ray, yep, and then we basically want to say transform dot position, and then the direction, which will obviously be. Just take another variable, color. So we're going to say color dot blue. And let's move this from here into here and then minus if we're facing the other way hit save let's go back let's hit play and let's see why if that is the reason so this is going to show us some um, you need to make sure gizmos is checked but you can see that there it is and there's our issue so you can see here it's actually not going over the line so it's never the raycast is never actually touching the wall so we need to actually make that slightly bigger. There's two ways we can do this. We can either plus on our wall di or on our start position somehow, or we can do it easier and say wall distance. So if we go up to in our code here and we say wall distance, I'd say with an extra one on the end, so five one, and we hit play, you should now see that it's slightly peaking out. So if we jump here, uh, maybe not. Maybe if we go to. Oh, I've gone to zero. 0 0.55. We'll say quite a lot for now. There you go. So now you can see we're slowly grappling down. So it was just because of how it works. So as you can see here, we can't actually jump. I'm trying to jump when I'm hooked onto the wall. And we can't actually jump. So we can slide down the wall, but we can't jump up the wall. So let's now add in the wall jump. Let's go back and turn off our debug. I'm just going to comment it out in case we need it for a later date. So I'm just going to comment that out and also comment this out. So now up here, to simply do this, all we need to say is, or is sliding, wall sliding, and and input dot get button down is equal to jump. And it's as simple as that. So that now allows us to jump if we're sliding as well. We don't want it, because obviously it's not going to be is grounded. We don't want to set is grounded because it's not grounded. It's actually still in the air. So we want to check if it's, it's separate. So now if we go over to our wall, we jump. Oh, did I set this? 
Yep. <laughs> Need to make sure that is five now. So that should now be five, 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 which gives us enough distance to touch the wall. There you go. And now you can see we can now jump and we made it to the top. Yay. So another thing you'll notice is when we jump from this to this and this, it works really smooth. But I'm going to disable the time this um, this time. So I'm just going to put an else statement here. And I'm just going to comment this out for a second. So if we now go back to this and we hit play, you guys won't notice anything really. But from my point of view, this feels a lot more sluggish. So my controls are a lot harder to use. So now, see, I tried to jump there, but the problem is I let go of the left analog stick. So you can see it's a lot harder for me to control the player because if I let go of the right key, but I want to jump left, then I have to um, I have to hold on to right key, jump, then press left instead of just pressing left straight away and jumping. So it's like you have to jump before you move left. Whereas with the timer, we're able to start moving left and then jump off the wall that way, which is more like how jumping is. You let go of the wall and then you push off with your feet. So let's just undo what we did here. So this is what the jump time does. We can also apply this exact same jump time to our grounded. So if we go here and we say, is touching ground, and then we can set our jump time again here and we can say, else if, and we can do the exact same thing here, which means if our player runs slightly off the edge, it has a split second to save itself and jump. And this is what a lot of platformers don't do because they think, oh no, it should be touching at all times. If it's not touching, then that's not their fault, essentially. Like the player is just the player's fault. But you want to give your player a chance to fix its mistakes. Or if you want to make it a hard game, then don't. But basically, I think everyone really agrees that not everyone sometimes you just run like because you're overlap so my overlap is like right on the edge so like when i go here you see i can't jump so if i'm moving really fast but i can see my player still touching it's not actually touching at this point here this point here so i can't jump i'm hitting space but i can't jump and that's why we give a timer for this so if we're moving really fast and we get to here we should still be able to jump but we can't so that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed making a uh, wall jumping mechanic. It is super easy. Anyway, guys, don't forget to drink your water, subscribe to the channel, and like this video if you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and...